What's up everybody? Welcome back or to the channel. So today I'm going to be going over with you my whole home generator service system that I put together for less than $1,600. So without further ado, let's jump in and let's go over it. Okay, first and foremost, this is the generator that I'm using. This is the Westinghouse WGen 9500 DFC. It is a dual fuel generator, so it can run off of gasoline or propane. And it has 9,500 working watts with 12,500 peak watts. So it's a pretty powerful generator. It works fantastic. Now, I've already done a full review video on this generator. So if you're interested in seeing that video, I'll put a link to that video in the description of this video. But for today, I just wanna go over how I use this as a whole home generator. Now, when I say whole home, please keep in mind, during a power outage, there are a few things I have to shut off so that I have enough power to run other things. And I'll go over all of that here shortly. But this is a very powerful generator and it typically runs around $1,000. So the purpose of this video is to show you that I created a manual whole home generator service for less than $1,600. So I have about a thousand tied up in just a generator. Then I bought this 50 amp RV cord that has the plug on both sides. So there's a plug there and then there's this plug here. It just has a cap on it. So this is a 10 foot length. I think I got that on Amazon for maybe around 60 bucks or so. So about a thousand for the generator and around 60 bucks or so for the cord. Now let's go outside and I'll show you the plug I had installed. Okay, so we're on the side of the house over here. And as you can see over here, way out there, if I could zoom in, you can see there's some big trees that really got knocked down in the most recent storm we had. But again, we get storms around here all the time, a lot of wind, and we do get a lot of power outages. So that's what prompted me to really have this service put in. So one of my buddies is an electrician and he actually helped me put this all together, but we put a 50 amp plug on the outside so it's a reliance plug here you flip it open it's a spring load and then there's our 50 amp plug right there okay now that plug there is what gets tied into my fuse panel down in the basement which we're going to go look at next so here's the fuse panel here okay now about right over here on the outside of the home is where that 50 amp plug was so from that plug on the outside of the home, we have a heavy gauge wire coming from the plug that comes through the rim board of the house, down behind my finished wall here, and then it comes right under here. This is it right here. So it goes down over here, and then it ties in to my fuse panel. Now how we installed this was pretty simple. You have to take the front panel off your fuse panel first. Now this is a 200 amp service, so you need to make sure you have plenty of extra spaces in your fuse panel to do this but because we needed a 50 amp double pull breaker which is right here we needed two spots at the top of the fuse panel so the two single breakers that used to be here we actually moved them down to the bottom because we needed our power to be at the very top so basically what we did was we moved the two breakers from up here and we moved them down to the bottom this power wire here comes up behind and sends power to here with a 50 amp double pull breaker right here. So that is basically how we're getting power from the outside of the home to come down to here to where it can power the bus bar. And then we got an interlock switch kit right here, which is pretty much a bracket on the front with these bolts that allows you to slide this bracket here up and down to lock out either your home main breaker or the generator 50 amp double pull breaker here. That way you cannot accidentally have both on at the same time. So how it works is like this. When the power goes off from the road to my house, I need to come down here and turn this main breaker off. Then I need to make a couple adjustments to my breakers over here, such as turning off any major appliances that you don't necessarily need. And maybe my double wall oven in the kitchen, my outside AC. Now, if it's winter time, I would turn the AC off. If it's summertime, I might make adjustments to other breakers. But anything that's typically a large double pull breaker, I would turn off. Now, keep in mind, you can run the microwave. You just have to play around with knowing what all is drawing current in your house and then kind of doing the math accordingly. Now, if my generator was a little more powerful, it might be able to run all of this. But just to be safe, I would always turn off my double wall oven. I'll turn off my outside AC unit because it's not being in use. And I'll turn off my dryer here, which is also a double pull breaker. And then I could run the microwave if I turned off the lights and or the breakers 
to maybe the second floor of my house. But again, you can play around with this however you want. That's why this is considered a manual generator service. So again, once the power goes out, I come down here, I turn this breaker off. I'll then go through and turn off a couple breakers that I don't plan on using on the bus bar first. Then I'll go outside and start my generator. So once the generator is sending power down to this breaker here, then I'll go ahead and lift this bracket up, flip that breaker over, and voila, we have power again. So we're gonna go ahead and demonstrate that today. So let me go ahead and pull my generator around the house outside and we're gonna plug it in. And then we're gonna come down in the basement and we're gonna demonstrate a power failure and how this all works. So let me go hook up the generator and we'll be right back. Okay, so we're back outside on the side of the house. So I just went ahead and wheeled out my generator over to this side of the house. And then I took my 50 amp RV cord, plugged it into the 50 amp outlet on the front of the generator, and then plugged the other end into the outlet that we installed on the house. Now again, let me just first say this. There are much more expensive ways and more convenient ways of doing a whole house generator. But let's be honest, if you're gonna pay a professional company or a professional electrician to do that, you could definitely be in the 10 to $15,000 cost to do a whole entire automatic generator service for your home. But hey, if you wanna spend that much money, go ahead. That's a great system, it's fantastic, it's convenient. I would have loved to have one of those, but I just don't wanna spend that much money on something that might only happen once or twice a year. Yes, we do get more power outages throughout the year, but typically the power's turned back on within five minutes. But maybe once or twice a year, we might lose power for maybe a half a day or maybe one or two days. So I'm only using this setup a couple times a year. That's why I wanted to create a manual setup that was very easy to use, but was very inexpensive. And let's face it, nowadays we're living in a very high inflated economy. So again, saving money is key. So again, we got everything hooked up here right now. Let's go down to the basement and we're gonna manually shut off our power and I'm gonna show you how this works. So I'll be right back in a minute. Okay, so we're back down in the basement. So again, you see I have a light on over here. As you see, I have some lights on over here above the pool table. Lights over here in the rest of the basement. Behind over here, I just have a backup freezer. Everything's turned on, working. And then I have a fridge in the kitchen and a fridge in the garage. So again, we're going to make sure all that's working because the main purpose of having a backup generator is in case of a power outage, we can keep the refrigerators running. We could keep the furnace running. We could keep the hot water tank running. We could keep lights and TVs running. And that's the ultimate goal. So let's go ahead and start that now. So as you can see here, my green light's lit right there, showing that this GFI is working. Everything's working in the house as normal. Again, I have everything labeled here nice and neat. So let's go ahead and demonstrate what a power outage would look like. So let's go ahead and do that. We're gonna take this off. One, two, three, okay? No power in the house, power is out. So now what I'm gonna do is come down here, find my AC, which is already turned off, 23 and 25, that's turned off. 19 and 21, that's gonna be my double wall oven. Turn that off. Gonna come over here to this double breaker. This is my dryer, turn that off. And let's just go ahead and turn off the microwave. So now those couple things are turned off. So let's go outside, start the generator, and we're gonna get this power hooked back up. So again, this is a very easy process to do manually. So again, for this to happen once or twice a year, it's not a big deal. So let me go ahead, turn our fuel to on. Let's go ahead, turn our breaker on. Go ahead and turn our battery on. So now we're pretty much good. The gas knob is set to gasoline. We have gas in the generator. So we're pretty much good to go. So now let's go ahead and start it. Now that's running, let's go back down the basement. Now just so you know, I paid my buddy about $500 to install this manual interlock transfer switch. You could probably do it yourself for a little bit cheaper, but I just didn't want to mess around with it, so I had him help me do it. So you figure $1,000 invested for the generator, about $500 for the manual transfer switch, and around $60 invested in the 50 amp RV cord. So again, less than $1,600. Now if you can listen, you can hear the generator running outside. So now we have power to this breaker, but we haven't turned the breaker on yet. You see how this interlock switch stops the breaker from moving? So once you turn the main breaker off, now we can slide this up 
and turn this on. Ready? We got power. Everything's turned back on. Lights. Everything's turned back on. Everything's working. Come back here. Look at the freezer. Everything's lit up. Everything's working. Let's come up in the garage. Check the refrigerator out here. Working, staying nice and cold. We're good to go there. Come in the house, open up the refrigerator here. Again, refrigerator's working up here. And again, we have lights on in the house, so we are good to go. So at this point right now, we are currently running pretty much the whole house on just the generator. So again, I did turn off a couple things so that I don't accidentally use too much power. But again, during a power outage situation, I wouldn't be using those systems anyways. Now, let me just say this. I do have a gas furnace. I do have a gas hot water tank. So the power that I'm using to run those systems is gonna be less because I'm only running a blower, not the entire system. So if you happen to have an all electric house, then you might have to shut a few things off. But again, for my house, being a 200 amp service, I'm pretty much running almost the entire house on just that generator. So now let's demonstrate when the power comes back on, what do you do? So again, we're walking over to the side of the house. Now let's just assume that maybe our power got turned back on from the transformer to the power box. Now you might not know this unless you got an email or a text message from your power company that says this, or maybe you noticed your neighbors have power back on, but let's assume that the power is back on. What you wanna do is shut this off. Let's go ahead and shut that down, turn it off, turn that off, unplug it. So now we're good to go there. Now let's go back down the basement. Okay, so we're back in the basement. Again, all the lights are turned back off because I shut the generator off. Now, we wanna come over here and we have to reverse our interlock switch. So now we're gonna turn off the generator 50 amp breaker, which I have labeled right here, generator 50 amp breaker, double pull, turn that off. The transfer switch now can come down and lock that for moving. And now I could go back in and turn on the breakers I turned off. So we'll turn that on and we'll turn this one on. All right, now everything's good. And then once you've turned your breakers back on, now your interlock switch drops down to, to lock this one from moving. Now you turn your main power back on. Everything's back to normal. So now we got our lights back on, everything's back to normal. Now again, depending on your fuse panel in your house and how much power you typically use, I would recommend going through your house room by room and figuring out how much power is being used in each room. And then just add up the watts being used. So typically when I'm doing the math, I try to round up just to be safe. So being that I have two refrigerators and one freezer, I try to round those up to about a thousand watts each because refrigerators can vary from 300 watts up to about 800 watts, but I like to round up. So let's just say I had two refrigerators and one freezer, that's 3000 watts. Then I have an electric blower on my furnace and I have an electric blower on my hot water tank. Those aren't drawing a whole lot of power. Let's just say 500 watts each, so we'll say another thousand. So now we're up to about 4,000 watts. Now I gotta figure out, okay, how much does a microwave use? Maybe a thousand watts, so now we're about 5,000. Then you gotta go through and think, okay, how many bedrooms do you have? How many other rooms do you have? Each light might be roughly 10 watts. So start calculating out how many things you plan to run and then whatever items you don't plan on running, just make sure you shut them off in your breaker box. Because again, if I were to just have everything turned on and I had every light turned on in the house and I ran that generator, it probably wouldn't be strong enough to run everything. But for the things that I wanted to run, such as my refrigerators, my freezer, my furnace, my hot water tank, a few TVs, a bunch of lights, a microwave, maybe a fan running in the house, you know, things like that, calculate that all out. As long as the things you plan on using and running during a power outage, you take those total watts, as long as your generator has a high enough wattage to cover the watts you plan on using, this system works perfectly fine. Again, this is a very inexpensive way to give you almost a whole home generator service that's not going to break the bank. So again, very, very simple and easy thing to install. It works fantastic. You just have to do a little bit of 
math and labeling of which breakers you plan to turn off and which ones you plan to keep on during a power outage. But again, this system has been working great for me. It was very inexpensive. It was very easy to install and I'm really happy with it overall. Okay, so there you go. So I went ahead and demonstrated how my manual whole home generator system works. Now, let me just clarify. When I say whole home generator, I don't mean every single outlet and every single light is going to work on this generator. What I mean is that during an emergency power outage, when I have no power at all, with this setup and choosing which breakers I wanna keep on and which breakers I wanna shut off, I can run the majority of my house to where I'm not really being inconvenienced during a power outage. I can run all three refrigerators to protect my food. I can keep my furnace running. I can keep my hot water tank running. I can turn on the fireplace if I want because it is a gas fireplace, but it does take an electronic ignition to light it. I can run TVs. I can run lights in the house. I could run the microwave if I wanted to. I could still live comfortably. I just need to know what features I plan to use in the home and make adjustments accordingly. But at the end of the day, this system works great for me because we don't lose power that often. And when we do, we don't lose it for that long. So again, this manual system here allows us to conveniently continue to live in our home during a power outage without breaking the bank. Again, this entire setup cost me less than $1,600 compared to a whole home, say Generac or other generator style automatic system, which could be 10 to $15,000. So again, I didn't wanna spend that much money for something I'd only use once in a blue moon. So again, at the end of the day, if you are looking for an inexpensive way to run the majority of your home during a power outage, I highly recommend doing something similar to this. Just get yourself a nice powerful generator that's portable, hook up a manual interlock transfer switch to your fuse box, get yourself a 50 amp RV cord, and you'll be good to go. But that's gonna be it for today's video. I hope this video helps some of you out. Do me a favor and hit that thumbs up button and like this video. If you have any questions, go ahead and put them in the comments section and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And also do me a favor, subscribe to the channel because it definitely helps me out and I greatly appreciate it. So that's it. I just want to say thank you to each and every one of you. Thank you. I truly appreciate you all. And as always, see you in the next video.